Hello and welcome to VOC TV, Voice of the Customer Television. I am your host, Senior Editor of Customer Management IQ, Gina Scanlon. Today we have a special guest, Phil Simon. He is the author of a new book, The New Small. Thank you for joining us, Phil. Gina, thanks for having me. So Phil, in your book you mentioned that you were a call center rep at Sony back in 1994. So what has changed since then? What do call center reps have now that they didn't have when you were a rep? Oh, the technology is so much more um, advanced. You know, back then you had glorified bulletin boards. You obviously didn't have customer email addresses. You didn't have Twitter handles, right? You didn't have websites. You couldn't mine the information on blogs because back in the mid-90s there really weren't proper blogs. So if you've taken the initiative, you actually can capture more information. And the CRM systems, I would argue, have advanced a lot as well. Um, older systems like Act and Goldmine, I think for their time, were very advanced. But now, whether it's Salesforce.com or Zoho or Sugar CRM, you have many different choices to track more customer information. And with that information, if you've got sort of a data mining tool or business intelligence tool, you can do interesting things with that data. You can find out why customers are coming to you, why they're sticking, why they're leaving, why they're buying, why they're not buying. There's just so much more information available. That's the possible. In reality, many organizations haven't got there yet. Why do you think consumers have grown more demanding in the past five to ten years? What's changed? Oh, the technology has really changed. And now people are into more of a self-service type of mentality, right? You no longer want to call a phone number and wait 15 minutes on hold and navigate a labyrinth of, of menus to get to the right person, right? Many people like me will just Google something, right? And even if companies will hide their 800 numbers in the way to talk to an actual person, there are websites out there that have cracked the code. So you can go to a certain site and type in, I don't know, you know, Verizon, and it'll tell you exactly the quickest way to talk to a person. But we're just a, a much less patient society, right? It used to be acceptable if you got an email, to say, okay, well, I'm not in the office right now, but I'll get to it later and I'll call, you know, I'll return it tomorrow. That usually doesn't suffice now. If you think about cloud computing and mobility, people now carry their basically computers with them to some extent. You're not going to sit there and bang on a complicated spreadsheet or access database on your Blackberry or your iPad. But you can answer basic information. So uh, I would argue that in large part the technology and the access to information through companies like Google have made us a much less patient society. So it isn't just customers. The other thing that I would add is um, if you've ever heard the term consumerization of, the, um, of, of IT. Mm -hmm. So you used to just use a computer in the workforce, right? You just went into your job and you'd sit at your desk and access your, uh, you know, your, your big ugly gray box. Well, now people are constantly using electronic devices, right? So you're more familiar with computers. You're, they're more accessible, the information, how to get what you want. So all these things have sort of collided, and as a result, to answer your question, uh, no, customers aren't terribly patient. Mm -hmm. Plus, they can reach other customers, right? I mean, if you Google um, you know, Verizon sucks or something or Comcast sucks, you will find websites devoted to angry customers so you can connect with them. You can vent on Twitter. And the smart companies like Verizon and Comcast are monitoring what people are saying on social networks, as you know. So they're trying to tap into that sentiment, and you can't necessarily make everybody happy, right? That hasn't changed. But I think that you can uh, potentially diffuse a volatile situation before it gets to be a lawsuit or some kind of public re uh, relations fiasco like United um, breaks guitars or something. Small business owners, as I'm sure you know, generally have a limited budget. So can you give our audience a couple examples of some emerging technologies that could help them out in that area? Oh, there's so many open source alternatives out there. I mentioned before Sugar CRM, so if you don't want to pay for um, a particular application, you can literally download it for free. Now, in my second book, a woman named Heather Meeker wrote a chapter on open source software, and she makes the distinction that when you're talking about free and open source software, think free speech, not free beer. Right? You can download it, but you still have to work with it. You might need to have a consultant or a support agreement. So it's not completely free, but Sugar CRM is one of them. I mean, so many people use WordPress or other open source or free content management systems. Even the products that aren't free in many cases are available in a limited capacity or for a limited time for free. If you've heard of the freemium model, which I mentioned in the book, now com many companies will let you try their products or services on a limited basis for a limited time. 
And it's interesting because if you think about the rise of broadband and the decrease in the cost of storage, it's now possible. Fifteen years ago, right, when people used to connect to the Internet and you got those America Online disks in the mail, right, well, those cost money. Now everyone just logs into the Internet and they can try things out. So there really are so many examples, uh, I mean, the thousands of different apps. In fact, in the book I mentioned even a dental office that saved $20,000 by finding an open source dental practice management application. So, I mean, that's real money. As the great Mark Twain said, a lie can go halfway around the world before the truth can get its boots on. So why do companies need to embrace social media? You know, with social media, obviously people are going to tell you, well, what's the ROI? Which to me is a completely misplaced argument. Here's why. What's your ROI on a traditional advertising campaign? What's the precise percentage? Well, no one can tell you. And one of my favorite quotes is from some advertising exec from, I think, Procter & Gamble back in the 1950s. I'd love to cut half of my ad budget. I don't know which half works. Right? So that hasn't changed. But now you can identify key people if you go to... Um, I forget which book it is. I think it's Tipping Point, and Malcolm Gladwell talks about connectors and people who have these kinds of influence. Those are the people you want to target, mm -hmm. right? So I think that you're sort of missing the boat if you don't understand that. We live in a world now in which anybody can get his or her voice out to the mass. I mean, look what's going on in Egypt right now. That wasn't really feasible 15 or 20 years ago. So there have been so many tectonic changes in the world right now. As a result of social media, I can't think of a single business that wouldn't benefit from at least investigating it. But of course, not everybody does social media well. So some people say, oh, we set up a Twitter account and nothing happened. Well, congratulations. There's something like 100 million Twitter accounts. If you think that the world was waiting for yours, you're out of your mind. So social media, and this is a, a pet peeve of mine, you know, people say, oh, it doesn't work. Well, it, you know, it takes time. There, you know, a blog gets started something like every seven seconds. So you need to spend the time on the content and have a sort of a pleasurable website. You don't want to have uh, too much information. It needs to be laid out in sort of an elegant way that encourages people to participate. You want to respond when people comment, when people tweet or they have a hashtag or something. You want people to be aware of that. So to me, companies that miss the boat on social media, I think, do so at their own peril um, because you, you see the results. I mean, companies are out there not only creating markets and reaching different customers, but they're also uh, managing crises. How is the younger generation, or millennials, changing the customer experience? <laughs> I mean, they're so computer savvy. They don't want to be told, um, you know, you have to call a different number. They, they, they're probably the most impatient of the group. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way because they are, you know, I, I heard a couple of them months ago that they no longer teach high school typing, which blows my mind because I was very good at typing in high school. But now when people come to high school, right, they already know how to type, right? They're already very social media savvy. And it's, I think, um, <laughs> really infiltrating other areas of society. So if you, know, you see some 18 or 19 or 25 year old kid who can do something, at least in my case, my inclination is to go, oh, how'd you do that? <laughs> right? And it's sort of infectious. Or you, they, they can Google stuff and they can, you know, you hear about these seven year old kids in China who build iPhone apps. You know, Zuckerberg was what, 20, 21 years old when he started Facebook, if that, maybe even 19. Mm. Um, so they're really, I think, putting a lot of pressure on organizations to change because the ones that are sort of ahead of the curve we're starting to see are, are really seeing some interesting results. It's not hard to Google something and find alternatives to just about anything. And they, the, the expression goes, everyone's just a click away. So if you're not paying attention to your customers and doing the things that I think the millennials have embraced, I mean, they're very, as I said before, they're very self-sufficient. Um, they don't want to be told, oh, we, we'll have to mail you that and you'll get it in four to six weeks. They want to go, I want to do it now, I want to do it online. And I think that many companies that have got social media religion understand that. And it's, look, there are still going to be people, right, maybe they're older, who want to fill out a proper form and mail it into the post office. And I think that's still okay. Not everyone wants to be in front of a computer all the time. But, I mean, things are just accelerating, right? I mean, what did uh, Apple sell last year? Seven and a half million iPads. You know, how many apps have they sold? Four billion. Mm -hmm. And they're all, it's all based on being able to do something now. Mm -hmm. So I think in large part that it's driven, I mean, by this sort of younger generation. Um, people like me are, and I say this in one of the first pages of the book, people like me in a way are dinosaurs. <laughs> I think I'll leave it there, Phil. Thank you for joining us today. You can find Phil's book on thenewsmall.com or Amazon, 
or on his website, philsimonsystems.com. Until next time, this is Gina Scanlon. Thanks for watching.